As light from objects enters the eye, it undergoes refraction, governed by Snell's law, at the transition between the outer air and the interior surface of the cornea. The light front undergoes further refraction as it passes through the posterior surface of the cornea and enters the interior chamber of the eye. The light front then passes through the pupillary opening of the iris to enter the eye lens, the crystalline lens. This is followed by several additional refractions taking place within the eye lens itself, and upon exiting the eye lens, the light front travels through the vitreous cavity, ultimately striking the retina of the eye where it is received by the photoreceptors, the rods and cones, converted to electrochemical signals and processed. These processed signals are then transmitted from the eye via the optic nerve to the visual cortex where the actual visual perception is generated in an abstract manner. The purpose of the Simulation Environment Semi is to simulate the visual perception of individuals suffering from various optical impairments. When an object is viewed by a normal eye, that is, an emetropic eye, made transparent here for a better view of things, light from the object enters the optics of the eye, undergoes refraction, and creates a retinal image that is upside down, backwards, and warped due to the spherical shape of the retina. Of course, this is not the way we actually see the world. In actuality, this retinal image undergoes a good deal of subsequent neural processing, both the retinal and cortical level, before generating the ultimate visual perception of the original object, which is now right side up, reversed, and unwarped. If this sequence of events were to be repeated with an optically impaired eye, that is, an amotropic eye, exemplified here with a severely distorted cornea, the result would be a distorted retinal image and a correspondingly distorted visual perception. As just seen, SIMI assumes that the retinal and cortical neural processing subsequent to the retinal image formation is exactly the same in both an optically impaired eye and a normal eye, seen here entering at screen right. As a consequence of this, one way to allow a person with normal vision to experience the visual perception of someone with an impaired eye is to simply instill in the normal eye the same distorted retinal image. This is exactly what SIM-Eye does. In a SIM-Eye simulation, the distorted retinal image is mapped onto the retina of the normal eye. In the simulation environment SIM-Eye, the direction of the original light path is then reversed. By back projecting the distorted retinal image through the optics of this normal eye, the image is projected outwards onto a plane at the same relative location as the original object. The result is a distorted projection of the object that is now right side up, reversed and unwarped, thus simulating the perception of the object as originally viewed by the person with the impaired eye. Irregular astigmatism is an eye defect which arises from a misshapen cornea. Seen here is the cornea of a normal eye, an emetropic eye, displaying a properly shaped aspheric cornea. In the computer model eye, this aspheric cornea is simulated with an aspheric surface of similar properties. With further coloration, the regularity and radial symmetry of this surface becomes even more evident. In sharp contrast to this, irregular astigmatism is characterized by a highly asymmetric cornea, a cornea which exhibits areas of irregular curvature. So what might the world look like with such a defect? To demonstrate the visual experience resulting from irregular astigmatism, various video scenes are presented emulating emetropic or unimpaired vision. This footage was subsequently processed using the computer-based simulation environment SIMI to generate a monocular approximation of vision as experienced by an individual with irregular astigmatism. To help appreciate the visual experience under one particular instance of irregular astigmatism, certain areas in the resulting field of view are highlighted. 
In the upper left and right corner, a more structured directional blurriness is visible, which is also exhibited towards the center top and bottom of the field of view. Whereas, in the lower left and right corner, an unstructured Gaussian-like blurriness occurs. In the central part of the field of view, a viewing channel with reduced blurriness is apparent. Here now are four video scenes of increasing complexity depicting this visual experience.